Okay, a title like this is obviously clickbait, but uh, it tells an important story about how to think about Max, and I think you'll understand why by the end. The real point of this video isn't actually to do anything particularly musical in 30 seconds, and I'm, I'm not going to keep you here for 30 years, but we really are going to make a Max for Live device in 30 seconds, so let's go. First, we're going to load an empty Max audio effect, press the Edit button, and then in the patch, We'll press the M key three times, which creates uh, three message boxes. Then we're going to type a little bit in each box. Set hi there in this one. And then in this one, we're just going to type the word set. We'll move these up so they're actually usable in Max or in Live. We'll save this. Give it a name. Hi there. We already made this earlier. And then we'll close it and we're done. Okay, so what does this device do? Well, on the left side of the parts that were already there, this takes audio in and sends it out without changing it. On the right side are the things we added. Clicking the message object that says set hi there tells the bottom message box to display the message hi there. Clicking the message object that just says set sends that message to the bottom message box, which clears it. The keyword set is a special message that tells a downstream message object to display whatever comes after the word set. So a set message followed by nothing means set me to nothing. Why make a device that does something this silly? Well, it's mostly just to prove to yourself that you can. Before I started making things with Max, I found it super intimidating. I didn't understand how Max behaved. I didn't understand how Max people thought. And it seemed like something that was meant for proper computer programmers. Like any deep environment, looking at a finished Max patch can look like staring into the abyss of unfathomable complexity. But it's not necessarily much better to look at an empty Max patch, which is like staring into the abyss of uh, unfathomable possibility. Different abysses, same kind of fear. The same thing is true of complex environments like Ableton Live or Music Notation, where the busy finished thing is pretty scary, but the empty thing is also kind of scary. Like, where do you even start? So our simple hi there device is a beginning. It's a fully functional, not particularly interesting, max audio effect. It doesn't do anything to the sound, but it does something. And that something is actually kind of a useful demonstration of some important principles in Max. Number one, making a Max device or a patch, as Max people call it, is about connecting objects together with wires. Objects have outlets that send stuff out and inlets that take stuff in. The stuff can be numbers or words or audio signals, lots of different things. Some objects have multiple inlets and or outlets. Others have just one or a variable number or only outlets or only inlets. It depends on the object. This image from the Cycling74 website is a pretty nice way to think about this stuff. I'll share it and some other links that I mentioned below. Number two, most Max objects are very simple and kind of stupid. They don't do much. Our message object just sends and displays messages. It's pretty fancy because it's also a clickable button, but that's kind of an exception. There are objects that add numbers. There aren't objects that both add and subtract numbers. So if you want to do both, you need separate objects. Number three, making complex things in Max is mostly about making simple things and then stitching them together. And so here's the real trick to learning Max. It's about breaking big problems down into little ones and then solving the little ones. Learning Max isn't about learning all of the objects. I don't know all the objects. There are hundreds of them. I know a few and they're the ones that I use over and over again. And I also know how to learn more if I need to. One of the big misunderstandings I see with people who are just starting to learn Max is that they're often looking for an object that does like a big thing, a sequencer object or a sound goodizer. There are some objects that do a lot of things, uh, but I tend not to use them very often because they're usually designed or optimized for a very specific kind of workflow or a way of thinking that usually doesn't match the thing that I'm trying to do at that moment. But a bunch of simple objects can be made to do almost anything if you put them together in the right way. Okay, so you have a first device. We've agreed it's not that interesting, but what are some other things you could make it do? I like to think about simple Max devices and then expanding them by coming up with little variations of them. Well, maybe it'd be interesting if this device um, could be a little bit more automatic. So maybe we push the set 
hi there message, but then it automatically clears itself after a second or something. Or maybe it responds to MIDI notes. You could imagine a case where it displays the message while you're holding a key down and uh, clears the message after you release the key. These kinds of things are totally straightforward in Max. So by now, I hope I've convinced you that you can actually do this. And maybe you're thinking, how do I really start learning this stuff? Well, Max has fantastic built-in documentation. This is how I started, and this is what I'd recommend to anybody. Number one, tutorials. Max has a collection of built-in tutorials that I think are the best way to really start. To get to these, open the Help menu, then choose Reference, then click the Home icon in the upper left corner, then unfold Max in the left column, and finally choose Tutorials. These tutorials are written lessons, but they also come with accompanying patches, so you're interacting with them as you read. And they go pretty far, but you might not need to do them all. After a while, you start to have a sense for how the whole system works, and you might be ready then to just jump in and make stuff. Number two, per object help. On any object, you can open the context menu and get a help entry that explains a bit about how the object works, what sorts of other objects it can be connected to, etc. But all of these help entries are actually max patches, so you can experiment with them. You can even open them up, change them, copy bits into your own patches, etc. Number three, there's tons of Mac stuff on the internet, and even questions that might seem really simple have probably been asked a bunch of times before. Cycling74 maintains a forum on their website, as well as an active Discord server. There's tons of YouTube tutorials, blog posts, etc. There's a really active Max community, and people are pretty generous about sharing patches and also answering questions. But the number one absolute most important piece of advice I can give you for how to learn Max is to have a reason to. Have something you actually want to build, and this will be motivating enough for you to go through the process of learning through these tutorials. Everyone told me this at the beginning, and I didn't realize how true it was until I had something I actually wanted to build. And only then did I have the motivation to get to work. So for me, that device was this thing. I call it Flip Sustain. The reason for this was that I had a sustain pedal that behaved backwards. It would sustain when I wasn't pressing the pedal and would stop when I pressed it. Certain sustain pedals just work this way. Some of them have switches on the back to flip their behavior or there are other tricks, but in my case, nothing worked. And then I realized this is the kind of thing that Max could probably do pretty easily. So I spent about four months starting from scratch and learning enough to make this thing. And it looks like this inside. Nine total objects, four months. But then I figured it out. And after that, I was hooked. I figured if I could make something like this, I could probably learn a little bit more and make more interesting things. But that leads to the part about making a device over the course of 30 years. I uploaded this device to maxforlive.com a little over 10 years ago. It's been downloaded like 3,000 times since then. But when I popped this device open while working on this video, I quickly saw a bunch of things I might want to change. I realized there were a lot of things I might do differently if I were to make it again from scratch starting now. And I might feel that way again in 10 years or 20 years, but I'm not going to work on it anymore. This device is done. It does what it's supposed to do. It solved my problem. Hopefully it solved the problem of the other 3,000 people that downloaded it. But like any complex system, Max invites this kind of tinkering and rethinking. You could work on the same thing for 30 years or forever. You could do this for a mix or a painting or a YouTube video. So another part of learning something like Max is learning when something is good enough and moving on. That's pretty good advice for any creative discipline or maybe almost anything in your life. Okay, I hope this convinced you to jump in and start making stuff with Max. I've found it really rewarding um, and it's fundamentally changed the way I think about music. Maybe it can do that for you too.